All righty, folks. We're coming back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. I'm your host, Daryl Martin, right here on TFNN.com. And don't forget, you can check us out on your mobile phone, TFNN.MOBI. Let's check out where the markets are at right now. We got the S&P is up nine points. Russell's up five. We got Nasdaq up 24. Dow screaming on up, up 98 points on the day. We got copper right now. Copper is down 1.5%. We got gold is down 3 quarters percent with silver down over 1% on the day. Going on over to our energy markets on oil. Oil is currently down 1%, moving down solid. Lots of good movement right there in our commodities. We got natural gas down about 2%. Corn is almost down a percent on the day along with soybeans. Hopping on over to FX Markets. Nice, good post FOMC day. Everything's rocking and rolling. Pound dollars up 97 pips. Euro dollar is up 54. We got the Euro pound down 20 pips. At dollar franc down 70. Dollar yen is currently up 36. Euro yen is up 98 pips on the day. We got the Aussie yen up 57. And uh, dollar index currently, what do we got? Uh, down 0.056. We got uh, soybeans is down 7 ticks on the day right now. All right, well, that gets us caught up with our current lunchtime market wrap. Let's check out a little bit of yesterday. Um, I had to step I got some Internet uh, upgrades that need to be taking place, and so missed a little bit of it. And um, I'm like, really? we got to schedule this during FOMC? So I'm all like on my phone trying to trade. But um, anyway, it's a beautiful thing about uh, trading on Nadex. You can do it on your phone. And just got to get yourself a little, you know, side 3G, 4G connection there to <laughs> get a little bit of charts going on. All right. So uh, yesterday had an awesome day of uh, oil. You know, I talked about doing this um, the spike striker trade on oil inventory days. And as you can see, you go over here, it gets in a short volume spike on the day, uh, keeps moving down, goes south right in at 10 a.m., gives another one top of the hour, goes on down south, gets another one in the middle of the hour, goes, does not, that one doesn't trigger. Doesn't trigger the first one right there, or that third one. And then it says, hey, we're done. Let's go on up, and we finish in the money. So just several good trades right in a row. Uh, market moving pretty much right on the expectations of the oil inventory move, so which is uh, you know obviously what we expect, and uh, so just a, a good overall day right there. You know not a lot of spikes before or after, not uncommon especially on oil inventory. But we, I mean perfect oil inventory spike strikers, and uh, those ranges just you know staying right in focus. Uh, so we can go through the FOMC. We'll come back to that because that'll take a little bit more time on the show there. Let's go ahead and bring up what we got on the Russell. So on the Russell right up here, and, um, well, that's the wrong button to hit. There we go. Okay, so looking at the Russell and checking out where it's at, uh, lots of good profit poppers, momentum scalps going on. And um, so go down, just take a quick profit, goes down again, takes profit, goes down right there, just sort of chilling on out. So, but uh, lots of momentum scalping going on. I mean, pretty much most of the day. So, just a little bit quiet in the first thing, then turns around, goes on back up. But then all of a sudden, we get this nice move down. Coming right down to about a deviation move, not quite over here, a little bit later in the day. Moved on down, flipped around on you, may have caught you right there in the last couple, but then he gave you a nice ride on back up. And a reminder um, that the momentum scalps are really, really simple. We just look for... Blue, which is actual volume, exceeding the expectation, which is that little yellow line right there. And um, we go in the direction of the bar. And I use diagnostic bars. It's sort of like a Renko bar, but a lot more advanced. It uses price action. And uh, bar may last a second, like these yellow lines right here. Tell me the bar lasted less than a second. Um, or way mast, you know, may, may go hours. But when it closes and it moves the set number of ticks, in this case 14 ticks from open to close, then it will make a new bar. As soon as it makes a new bar, it's at a... Entry three takes below the bar, set a stop loss right above it there, and basically I take profit. Um, you know, 14 ticks from the close of that bar, uh, that was my trigger bar, or 11 ticks lower from my entry. And so you're like entry, 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 entry. I mean, it's all the way down, and then you have a couple where it stopped around on you, and then you go entry, entry. I mean, all the way up, and you're basically you're getting in here, out here, in here, out here, in here. I mean, just over and over and over and over and over and over again. You're talking 20 or 30 trades. Clearing, you know, about uh, about a hundred dollars or so a pop, and uh, you know after fees and everything else included, so not too shabby. It's a couple thousand dollars right there. Um, all right, going on in and looking at the Nasdaq, we can see how that did. Of course, also you know same day, and uh, on Nasdaq got uh, 
a bit of a reversal going on over here, but we also had momentum scalps just like crazy all the way down. Again, that one flipped on you again, but it, you got to ride it back up. A little choppy right there, but again, just kept going and gave you a nice move. And uh, when we got it right up here, we're basically turning the thing off because we're getting right back at a one deviation move, as you can see. And so it's time just to chill out and let the market do its thing. But, I mean, it was just all day just firing off. And uh, let's check out, of course, gold. Some massive after-hour moves there. And, uh, you know, we got this big, big move on the release. So big, like, about, I want to say it was about 10 points right there. And uh, moved on down. And this is with, you know, FOMC going on. And we still got within our deviation move because we moved up about a third of a deviation. Then we moved down 0.7 of a deviation, as you can see. This green line here says, what's the retracement from the high? And so it basically moved down one deviation from the high. And that was the FOMC day. So with a bigger move, expected move day, when it pulled the implied volatility out, what's in the options market, accounted for that and lets you know, when is this thing going to be done? And that's why when I post on the site, I don't just post what the deviation levels are. I also post what a deviation move is. So that way you can measure that high to low, and you can stay on top of that. And uh, it just makes a massive difference in your trading when you have a market-built objective expectation, not a how far you want it to go expectation going on. And just to show you, you know, like I said, we post these every day inside the scanner. And uh, we got, you know, for the Nadex here, we got the spread scanner, we got the binary scanner, but we also include deviations. We don't just include them on Nadex instruments. We include them on instruments not even listed on Nadex, but we got, you know, tons of Forex pairs. We got futures. Uh, e S N Q T F Y M C L N G G C H G S I, you know, corn, soybeans, uh, multiple of the F X ones right there. And as you can see, we list over here on the side what is a one deviation move, what is a half deviation move, and then we say, well, what is that from settlement? So that gives you a nice easy number from settlement. But if it goes up like you know 0 0.5 and then down to negative 0 0.5, well, that'd be a deviation from high to low. So that's why we want to know what that deviation itself is. And that wraps up uh, gold right there. Going on in, looking at um, iron condor trade on euro dollar. Picking that one on up. And let's see here. Uh, let's, there we go. So on your dollar, I mean, there's a lot of different ways you can do these, but we do, we like to go in and do iron condors on these. And we look at different time frames, like 90 minutes before, an hour before, um, announcements come out, things like that. And so, you know, I have some traders that will send in different trades to me and had uh, some sort of saying that, you know, they know that, because I've talked about it, that the market usually will go pretty flat, like 12 to 1, basically 12 to 2, really. And so it told you what the expectations were of movement. And as you can see, it stayed really well within those expectations. Um, and let's see what else we have on the list. Oh, let me update that. And uh, we also had some stuff going on yesterday, uh, iron condors right here. I mean, just look at, here's the pound dollar. Here's one hour iron condors. Now, you could look at two hour and four hour um, iron condors as well. But just look at how it stays within that range over and over again. So if you can get anywhere even close to a break even on the top or bottom side of the range, because a lot of times it'll come right back in the range. Okay, even like this where it breaks out, notice how it comes on back in. And um, so if you can just do it over and over and just collect a little bit each time, you're rocking. And, uh, you know, if you break even or lose a little bit occasionally, you know, but more often than not, hour after hour after hour, you're going to bring something in, then that's awesome, especially when it's high implied volatility days or days to look at that. Uh, we had a lot of news uh, come on out this morning. We had natural gas uh, inventories come on out. And look at that. That's our expected move on natural gas for the oil inventory report. And check it out. It goes right down to it. Bam. Doesn't trigger a spike striker to go long. Okay? Doesn't trigger one to go long. That doesn't mean you couldn't go long, but when would you want to go long? So I want you to think about this. If you're watching this and we're saying, hey, oil is going to move on down, or not oil, but natural gas is going to move on down to 3,900. And uh, by the way, 38, you know, 99 is also, um, you know, in case you didn't notice, one deviation move. So not only do we have the expectation that it'll move down here, but that is at the deviation line. So we really expect the market to. Fly down there, stop, and go flat or turn around. Well, not only do you have, you know, a perfect move for either doing a straddle or an iron condor based on the cost, okay, uh, even an iron butterfly or a strangle. I mean, there's a lot of ways you can play this. 
and you had the expectations. Expectations were perfectly hit. But you also have the ability to look at, and I've talked about this. I talked about this on um, natural gas. I've talked about it on oil. Market flies down. You get a spike trigger. It doesn't trigger on the 5 or the 10. What makes it trigger? It triggers when it breaks the previous bar's high. Okay, so these were the three bars involved in the five-minute volume spike. This bar needs to break that bar's high. It doesn't happen. We're at a one deviation line. We also get a 10-minute one. Okay, so this bar needed to break that bar's high. It didn't happen. I'm still expecting it to pull back or at least go flat. We're at a one deviation level. It drops down. It pulls up a little bit. So profit taking going on. People, that, that's, that's firms knowing what their deviations are. That's why I, I talk about this all the time saying you need to know your implied deviation levels. Because if you don't, if you don't have these diagnostic deviations, which are just implied volatility based, you are a step behind the markets because you don't have a proper expectation on where it should stop. That's objective that a computer is calculating. Okay? So I learned this from floor traders, teaching it to you. It gets there, it is expected to stop and either go flat or back the other way. So it goes down, boom, pops up, doesn't trigger, doesn't trigger, doesn't trigger, but right there back at the one deviation. We still haven't had that pop up yet. We should be done. There's nothing left to drive it further down, okay? It finally does break. That's where you could go in and you could grab an end-of-day expiration to go long. I'm doing in the money and at the money. Might even go for an out-of-the-money for looking at the top of the range for the end of the day. Just like go in and calculate de deviation levels to end at 2.30 when a natural gas pit closes. So there's a lot of ways that you can take advantage of these trades. You just got to start you know, thinking outside the box. Um, uh, this morning, we'll see on oil, you know, like we talk about uh, momentum scalps all the time. And looking at those. And let's see here. What do we got? Uh, this, this morning, we got uh, some good... Uh, Activity right there, but just you know, moving on down a little bit, a little bit more down, pushing up on the deviation level right here about this point. So we got to back off, but um, overall, I mean, we got some good momentum scops on it, and uh, not the best morning on oil, but not a bad morning at all. All right, just stay right there. We'll be back right after this. Yeah, and uh, again, going over looking at the, we were looking at oil. And then uh, now we're walking on, check out the indices, a little bit choppy flat, but still got some, you know, movement on them, but uh, nothing just, you know, massive to write home about. Um, Dow had that nice 100-point move, and, uh, but, you know, it's just sort of been slowly creeping its way up there, and, um, you know, post-FOMC day, lots of orders, lots of stops being hit, it's moving on back up to where those stops are at, and uh, just doing its thing. All right, let's go ahead and uh, let's take a look here. And let me close these out. We don't need all of these anymore. And we'll hop on over here. And let's check out where we're at on the uh, morning news releases. Um, and we're at on the news plan to make sure that you got everything you need. All right, so, <coughs> pardon me, um, on the upcoming news releases for today, tomorrow, all that, what do we have left? Let's see, we had uh, U.S. Building Home Starts came on out this morning, and let me pull that one up on a chart for you as well. We'll get that going. By the way, I got a gold chart up. I just want to review this real quick. But yeah, we busted through. I was doing a trade the other night with some traders. I'm like, hey, it's going to go down. I'm like, it's going to, wow. Yeah, we're right on down to there. We're talking about it busting this level and going short and it hitting down here. Came on down while we were talking. Nailed it. Um, then went on further down. Kept going. Actually broke through every magnet level. We have to go back and uh, get some more magnets. Yeah, it's coming right back up though, to that magnet. To the tick came to that magnet level. These are ones I plotted previously, so that would require me now to go way back. And what I do is I just grab the chart on the right side and just start pulling back until I find price action, which I may have to go pretty far. I may have to actually load more data to even find it. Yeah, I'm going to have to go pretty far back to get some magnets down there. But uh, gold's moving on down. And... Um, yeah, I got I'm 51 points up right now on a short position. That's pretty sweet. 
Uh, keep on going. Okay. So we got uh, gold right there, but let's go ahead and hop on over and let's check out the euro dollar. Okay. So let me get a new chart up over here. Right on over here. Grab that. And let's just throw that into the new. Let's put up magnets on here, make it easy. Bring that one up. And let's talk about building permits. So this morning we had building permits 8 to 10 a.m. And on that, the uh, report came out. Um, uh, one minus one million. We expected a positive one million. And on our trade, we were expecting it to stay in between, basically about thirty pips of uh, movement uh, between eight and ten a.m. Let's see if we stayed inside that range, entering at eight o'clock right here, going to ten a.m. And we got fourteen pips uh, high side going on over here. We moved up. 25, and we moved down. That was like a little more than that. I think I plotted that one wrong. Let's do it again. Moved on down here. 21, but uh, close to close, 14. So if you got in 30, then that means that you were able to uh, bring in the 16 bucks on the trade. You made it a leg in on the trade when it popped down and popped up uh, to be able to grab it, but it was there. All right, so uh, we got all sorts of other things going on, too. We got Scottish independence votes happening all day. Um, I haven't even kept up with it today, but um, let's see here. I'll, let's see. Lotus, right now it's at a no vote at 53%. That's still pretty close. Um, so the uh, Ipsos Mori poll for London Evening Standard just released. It has a no on 53% and a yes on 47%, suggesting a slightly wider gap exit poll today will be the main focus. Uh, the pound dollar is rally, the euro pound down. Um, on this news, so just be aware of that. That's obviously causing a little, uh, little stir. And uh, let's, I guess we might as well, while we're talking about, we go and just check out the pound dollar. And we'll bring that one on up. And uh, be right back. We'll cover the rest of the news. But yeah, so a massive rally, up one and a half deviations. I guess uh, they're they want them to be out, or they're very happy that it looks like a no. One of the two. Stay there. We'll be back right after this. All righty, folks. Welcome on back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. And uh, I wanted to say a special thanks to Austin. Sent me a T-shirt for my birthday. It was hilarious. That, um, all righty, folks. Like all of the T-shirt and everything. He's making fun of me and enjoying it all at the same time. So good stuff. Um, anyway, so back on here to uh, Pound Dollar. We got a nice big move going on on it. So sort of backing up. But again, said expect a lot of volatility on that one. Um, just with that going on, we had a Bank of Japan. Governor Karada was talking. Let's go ahead and look over at the... Let's, uh, let's look at the Euro Pound, too, since we're just on that pound topic. And then I'll switch on over to U.S. Yen or Japan there. But a uh, big move on Euro Pound. Talk about something that doesn't ever move. And uh, we got a massive move on that. And uh, sort of exploding as these polls come out. And... Um, we got a U.S. yen going on right now, and let's see here. Here it comes, and uh, wow, pretty tight on the deviation levels for today. But look at that; it's right up to it from, and I measure it from three o'clock, by the way. Fair water. So as it goes over here, um, and pops on up, and then boom, there's the deviation move, and we hit right on a deviation on U.S. yen today. So even with him talking last night. Not just a not a big move, but it, I mean, it basically drove the. I guess it was a pretty decent move. It drove the entire market up. He was talking from two to three, and so really pre before his speech, we actually got a, a, a full deviation move. He talked, and it basically dropped on down uh, back half a deviation. So got some good volatility in the yen last night. Uh, that was excellent. Or early this morning, I guess a little bit of both, right? And then uh, we had pound retail sales uh, taking us back on to pound. And on pound retail sells, uh, basically, you know, not usually at that main trade, but looking for a potential spike striker. Let's see, do we have a spike striker on that? Let me put that on here. Let's see. There we go. And oh yeah, we got spike strikers all over the pound dollar. 
What about a 430 specifically? Let's go in and look at it. And look at it. Never broke. So it was there, but it never broke to give us a uh, it's looking for a buy on it. Oh, it did break right there. Yeah, we got a 440 buy. Okay, and it went on up. Um, but, I mean, just lots of spikes going on. We got some sells, buys. It works a lot better when I throw the ranges on there. And because uh, you can sort of see when the expirations are. But um, let's see. We got the uh, your targeted LTRO early this morning with all the other news going on. Let's see what kind of impact that had. That came out at 615. And right here, a little bit of a move. Nothing major, but uh, you can tell that little spike happened right when that came out. And uh, it sort of chilled out a little bit. Uh, but we got uh, CAD had their uh, foreign uh, security purchases being released this morning. We'll go ahead and knock that out. Look at the dollar CAD. And there we go. Love that on up. And okay. So uh, with the dollar CAD and uh, backing on down, move down. Got a nice deviation, solid deviation move on it. Had that release come out at 8:30. Which uh, we promptly got a uh, spike tracker right there, and it did. It popped up again. Deviation move. It's it's bouncing actually right off of right off of its uh, settlement price, and then came on back down for a, a nice little move there. All right, let's go ahead and look at. Um, I know they got a Fed chair speech on the calendar too. I want to go over that with you. See, where is that at? She's speaking. Oh, she, yeah. So <laughs> I missed that one. But um, 8.45 this morning. So uh, Yellen had a little talk. And I uh, got Philly Fed manufacturing came out as well. We just had so much early morning news that it sort of built up. Um, and employment claims, of course, can always do spikes on those as well. They come out at 8.30. And uh, Philly Fed, like I said, we talked about that one already. And we got weekly natural gas. We already covered that. For tomorrow, we got a lot of reports coming out on the dollar CAD. We're looking at iron condors on it. Um, the reports that we're looking at on the dollar cat specifically um, are the core CPI, the wholesale sales, the CPI, all coming out at 8.30. Okay, so I'll make sure I add those onto mine. And we're looking for, like I said, an iron condor on it. Let me uh, get the exact stats for you for the iron condor we're looking for. Um... And the trade basically is a inner eight for 10 a.m. expiration with a minimum profit of thirty dollars. So uh, that's buying the lower spread, selling the upper spread uh, to do an iron condor on that. Um, also, we're going to have uh, G20 meetings are going to be starting up tomorrow, big on Saturday. Uh, just be aware that um, all the head finance bigwigs and everybody else out there talking. And that can cause uh, just random volatility if they come out and talk to the press. And so that's when I'll have up like a, a new stream, like financial juice or something like that. That's just feeding stuff in um, from like, you know, 50 different sources. And uh, just so I can sort of see headlines. Um, sometimes they pop up and then you see a move happening and you know it's related to that. And that's really, it's, it's not, I mean, news is always history by the time you see it. But um, at least you can go, okay, that was news related. What am I going to do now? And, you know, you can move on. But uh, versus just going, okay, is, is the trend changing or is that just some sort of, you know, you know, new shock and awe thing going on? Um, all right, we'll go on over to the uh, to next week. And i uh, got to get a head start for you already on that. Uh, looks like we got uh, Westpac Consumer Sentiment and stuff like that coming out. And if I have that on the right, uh, yeah, on the Aussie, it's going to affect the Aussie and Yen pairs. So uh, let me pull this up for you over here so we can go ahead and I'll bring the calendar up. And so I got G20 meetings, day two, like I said, right there. Looking on over Sunday, uh, New Zealand dollar, Westpac consumer sentiment. That can't have like, an effect again on the um, Aussie or the Yen, whatever they. Because they're opening up at six, and you can open, you can trade them at six on Nadex on the spreads and the binaries both. And uh, so, just want to you know know that's happening. Uh, and then uh, Japan uh, looks like has a yet another must be nice uh, another bank holiday. They have more holidays um, on the. I'm gonna say this wrong. Autumnal equinox day, but. Um, 
Anyway, so that's going to be going on. That's a big holiday that will you know, close it down. Um, probably my guess is I haven't looked at the uh, pop-up report, but I'm pretty sure that uh, the Nikkei will be closed down as well for trading uh, due to the bank holiday. That will make the yen a little more lighter, and it will pop usually pretty decent when it opens on Tuesday. Okay? So uh, that would be one thing to add to your calendar you know, post bank holiday, usually we'll see a nice pop in the evening, like somewhere between six and eight. Um, you know, usually between seven and eight, we'll see a pretty big pop on the yen, like when it first opens up, when all their their markets open back up after a holiday. So, uh, just a hint, hint for you, okay? Because um, you know, you think about it on Monday, but sometimes people forget about it, and so that'd really be Monday night. It wouldn't be Tuesday. I'm sorry, that'd be like Monday night um, when it opens back up for Tuesday. So, and I'd even watch, you know, the Wednesday and everything else. There's, there's pops usually like right a day or two after those holidays. They're usually pretty nice on the yen. Um, got the German, you know, Bubba monthly report coming out. Obviously, that can have a decent impact on the euro, 6 a.m. And uh, we're going to have U.S. existing home sales. That's going to be our first trade on Monday. It's 9 to 11 a.m. And um, the report's coming out at 10 a.m. on the existing home sales. And so... Uh, we are going to be looking for an entry at 9, no later than 9.45, with an expiration of 11, and a minimum profit of $30 on that trade, okay? And I might even dive a little deeper into that one, and we'll see, but I think, we're, you know, 30 bucks is about what we're looking at on that new home sales. Um, also, add to that, okay, add to that report, if you're a copper trader, a lot of times um, existing, really, it's not so much existing home sales, so I guess this really isn't for this report, but just a sideline note for you to put in your journal. New home sales reports, permits for building new homes, those could have a pretty decent impact on copper, okay? Because all the copper that goes into building a home. Um, and then we go on into um, the China HSBC flash coming on out. So obviously Aussie and Yen can be affected. That um, PMI is going to be at 9.45 p.m., so, again, not really a news trade event, not yet. Uh, there is uh, some exciting news I've seen. They're, ju they're just demoing it right now. But um, they are working on potentially launching. This is another, uh, what I'm excited about, it's another future traded on the SGX, the Singapore Exchange. They already have uh, Nikkei 225 on there. And uh, so the China, the new China 50. So, um, the FTSE China 50 or whatever. So, they're uh, looking at adding that potentially to Nadex as well, which would uh, make all of these reports from China something we could potentially start trading um, by having actually access to an index when all these reports come out. So, anyways, that uh, would be a very cool opportunity. It would actually give you uh, two reasons to get access to that exchange. It costs a little bit of money for it. So, I mean, it's like 70, 80 bucks. It's worth it, but, you know, if you got two different things, you got to, you know, Two different indices that you can trade on it. Be very good for nighttime traders, especially, and um, a way to take advantage of that. So right now, they, I, all I've seen in there so far is a weekly binary. Um, let me see if they've added. Let me double check right now. And and I know it's just like completely in beta at the moment, so it's nothing to get excited about yet. But they used to have the Cosby on there, and that is, you want to talk about something that is difficult to get access to a data feed um, for at least the average trader. I mean, you know, you got a Bloomberg, whatever, but just a very difficult one. I mean, through all the major data feeds I know, it's even extremely difficult. And, like, I was talking to Penson about getting it. And, uh, and even with the data feed, to get all the tick data you want and getting the format you want and feeding in and doing everything that you're used to, um, be very, very challenging. But let's go over here. See, like, they, this new China 50 coming up. Like I said there, so far, they only got weeklies. They're just testing it. They're not even open right now. Um, and it's probably like 3.55 in the morning, so I'm, I'm imagining they're going to open somewhere around 6 or 7. And uh, But they just have, they have limited hours that they're open, and they just got the weeklies, no intradays. Might have intradays in the morning when they pop up. And um, I'm usually just not up watching at that time of night. <laughs> But for those of you looking for that, uh, that'll be a great opportunity, and those who want to take advantage of that. So just more and more cool stuff they keep adding in. Um, okay, so that gets us uh, through 
that, but like I said, just one more report. Now, the other exciting news happening over on Nadex, if you haven't heard already, you, uh, you need to right now stop whatever you're doing, okay? Go to TFNN.com, and you're going to see the virtual trading competition. Fake money, real cash, okay? <laughs> so you get to trade a demo account. They're going to set up a unique demo account. So if you already have a Nadex demo, they're going to give you a separate one just for this, okay? And giving away $10,000 in cash prizes, $3,000 to the first place, plus five people getting 100 bucks a day on random drawing, plus a copy of Tommy O'Brien's book. In addition, second place, 1500 third place, 750 You know, fourth place... 500 bucks, fifth place, 500 bucks, sixth through ninth place, or actually sixth through tenth place, 250 bucks. And then 11th through 20th, also get a copy of the book. Uh, the daily winners has nothing to do with how good you do. If you just get in there every day, place at least a trade, you're entered into the random drawing contest for the five daily winners. So uh, there's going to be 70 prizes given out, 45 total winners, but you have to register now. They are going to close registration. No, like, no later than um, September 25th, okay? Noon, September 25th is when registration closes. But they can't, I mean, trying to pull all these reports on everybody and keep everything up, they are going to cap out how many people are able to enter into the competition. I don't know the cap. I'm not in charge of that stuff. Um, but when it caps out, the form will come down, okay? So my recommendation is just click the button now. And go ahead and get yourself registered and up and on there. And uh, you'll get a email with your information, okay, um, put up on there. And I believe Tommy O'Brien is also going to be doing an exclusive webinar for people who um, register as well. So uh, if you register, you get access to their you know, interactive chat room. And, um, again, he's going to do a webinar on the 25th at 6 o'clock. And uh, showing you stuff about how to trade on the Nadex platform and everything else. So, anyways, just something I wanted you to check out and be able to see. And, uh, like I said, there, there's no reason not to do it. It costs you nothing to enter. You're risking nothing by doing it because you're trading a demo competition. You can actually win real cash. And uh, these are always a lot of fun. And, um, you know, you can read all the rules. Make sure you do read the rules, you know, and how it works. And, um, you know, no cheating, stuff like that. <laughs> but, um, Anyways, but uh, read it, fill it out, and it's uh, it's just fun. So we'll be announcing those uh, prizes all throughout the day, every day. All right, Jerry there. We'll be back right after this break. All right, folks, we're going back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. And we're just going over the competition again. If you have not registered for the virtual trading competition, register now. Homepage in.com. Right click on virtual trading competition. They got education. Tommy's going to do a, a, and I guess he's going to go to Madness. I don't know he's going to go over. Whatever it is, you're going to want to know. You're wanna, going to want to attend. But also get a head start. Don't wait. Um, you know, on that too. Like that, that's that's a big benefit of getting on there now. But also go hop in there and, you know, take advantage of the education we have on the site under the scanner. So you can go down here. Box spread scanner, binary scanner. We talk about binaries, talk about spreads on Nadex. That's the deviations, everything. Get access to that now. Um, Stewie trial will take you through the competition more than that, so you can check everything out. Um, we got the deviation levels on there. We got the tutorial videos on there. Um, also on Nadex's site under their uh, webinar section, education webinar section, and everything else. We talk about that actually, I think, on the uh, homepage. We tell you. So if we go right over here, where is it at? Questions, where can I learn more? Uh, they got their academy trading videos right over here. And so they give you a bunch of basic uh, videos on Nadex as well. They get you some stuff going. And then, of course, just their whole education section. So the webinars. So I do webinars for them all the time as well. And uh, But just some great stuff. Their YouTube channel, full of videos. I just want to get you going and get you started and get you ready for this competition. Um, Okay, well, that uh, we, we got uh, through the 22nd just to give you a, a clip of what we're looking at next week. We have a new home sales coming on the 24th. And as I was mentioning on the last, uh, before the break there, that, that should affect copper as well. Uh, we're going to be looking for a 9 to 11 a.m. Um, $30 minimum profit on euro, not on copper. Just uh, be aware that can cause some volatility if you're a copper trader. 
Um, and you can trade copper on Nadex, by the way. Uh, and then we got, what else do we have? Uh, other two main releases looks like I have on my list right now are the CAD Core Retail Cells. A little bit quieter of a week. Um, and that's going to be 8 to 10 a.m. And with that, um, it's 10. We're looking for a $20, pretty quiet one, $20 minimum um, take profit on the trade. Okay, for doing an iron condor, it's buying the lower spread, selling the upper spread. And then going on up here, we're looking at, what are we, let's see, we got uh, U.S. various releases. So we got a variety of quarterable good orders and durable good orders. And looking for a $25 minimum profit iron condor. And uh, that's um, entering, like I said, at 8 a.m. for 10 a.m. expiration with the release coming out at 8.30. Okay? $25 minimum take profit. Those are our main um, news trades. Of course, we've got oil inventory coming out on Wednesday, like we do every Wednesday at 10.30. we got natural gas coming out on Thursday at 10.30. We've got unemployment claims coming out on Thursday at 8.30. Um, and uh, some other things on the list. Let's look through and see what we got. Those are the trades I already have done. Um... Let's see right there. We got uh, Draghi is speaking. We're going to want to have that on our list for Monday, 9 a.m. So that's definitely a be aware event. So he's the, the head guy there. Um, so add that one on my list. Let's make sure we got that done. Dudley speaking should not be as big of a deal, but not, doesn't hurt to be aware of it. Um... And typing that up, making the notes. Hopefully, you're taking some notes too. Um, and we've got another little one uh, to, at night. Let's see. A lot of these are usually just little speeches, um, FOMC speeches. So, speaking at an economic club, yeah, I wouldn't even worry about that right there. But uh, that'll keep, that'll take you through the show. So, anyways, uh, y'all have a great day, and I'll see you tomorrow on Bull Bear Binary Hour with Tommy O'Brien and on the Diagnostic Trading Hour right here. Y'all have a great day.